Greetings, Sasquatch and Aquas and Mr. Coconut. This is Mad Hair Patrick. It's that time again. It's time for me to review another Total Drama season. And last time, I reviewed Total Drama All Stars. I was disappointed. But the past is the past now, and now it's time to press the reset button. <laughs> Sorry, wrong controller. That's not important right now. It's for a family barbecue. Ah, here's the real deal. And go! And now we come to Total Drama Season 6. Wait, it's not Season 6? Then what season is this? Season 5 Part 2. So is this continuing All-Stars? Well, no, there's a new cast and even a new island. How is this a tie-in to Season 5? Okay, this production history makes no sense because this season, or whatever, could have been Season 6. It's simple, and it will make the career of the show one step closer to its 10 seasons goal. But I'm not here to decide if this is Season 5 or 6. I'm here to talk about the show. Welcome to another episode of The Wonder Reviews. Let's blow stuff up! This is Total Drama Pocket Tail Island. <laughs> Hey, remember in All-Stars where they tried to focus on this one character who has an evil personality in his head? Well, forget that, because Pocket Tail Island is going back to the main and real focus of the entire show, the competition. As you know, there's 14 new contestants competing for a million dollars, but this time on a new island. Yeah, spoilers, Chris ended up singing the old one. And this island is known as Pocket Tail Island, which is Cree for Explode. Since now we are back on satirizing reality shows, this one oddly enough gives it a more survivor flair to it. The contestants have to find their own food and shelter if they ever want to survive the island, and Chris. With no cabins, mess halls, or showers, this one actually takes it to a whole new level. Another thing that's good is obviously the interaction between the new cats because we get to see them form allies and enemies and try to pursue their dreams if they win the million. There's even a big twist on the island itself, which I won't spoil here. I'm guessing the only criticism I have with this show is that some of the interactions are a bit off-key. Some of the side plots work like the sisters, Sean, Jasmine, and more, but then there are some like Dave and Skye that are not as well executed. I'll explain more once I get to the characters. It may not be Total Drama Season 6, but this is actually the Season 5 we want to see. If you guys recall my thoughts on Revenge of the Island, the new cast I thought was absolutely spot on. But with the new ones of Pocket Tail Island, I actually feel mixed about them. They're not bad characters, and there's even some memorable ones. There are some we focus on, and some not so much. There are some characters that can stand out by themselves as charming or comical, like Ronnie is the farm boy that has a crush on every girl he talks to, Topher is the huge Chris fan that wants to be like him, Scarlet is the know-it-all genius, Beardo is the beatboxer that makes a lot of sound effects, and Ella is the princess that loves to sing even though Chris forbids her not to. But then there are a few characters that are just not funny. Like, there's this little boy named Max who thinks he's an evil villain, but he's nothing more than a comic relief. And I'm not gonna lie, this guy is obnoxious and annoying. I didn't crack a smile while he's on screen. He just praises himself thinking he's this season's villain and gives Scarlet a hard time. But the only thing you can describe him is that he acts more like Bling Bling Boy from Johnny Tess. But at least he's not the worst character of this season. Oh no, that would be Leonard, the LARPer stereotype who thinks he's a wizard but ends up wasting the game with his useless spells that don't work. With Sugar, on the other hand, she's actually more of a villain in this show since she's jealous of Ella thinking she's stealing her spotlight, but Ella wants to be friends with her. But Sugar only cares about herself and her looks, and she is actually a competition beast. Then there are the sisters, Amy and Sammy. Uh, it's Sammy? Sorry, force a habit. These two are actually interesting because not only do we have two relatives competing together, there's an interesting side plot where Sammy tries to stand up against her evil sister. And now comes the relationships. One that's good, and the other bad. Starting with Dave, he's basically a ripoff of Mike from Season 4, but lacks any personality or personalities. 
Yeah, the show tries to make him interesting where he's determined to make Sky his girlfriend. But this one passed on as mood swings. You'll never know if Sky starts loving Dave, but then suddenly she'll neglect and say no to him just so she can focus on the game. And then there's Sean and Jasmine's relationship. These two are freaking awesome. Jasmine is a strong Australian girl and Sean is a paranoid dude that's defending himself against zombies. Both of them are survival experts and they're one of my personal favorites on Pocket Tail Island. Oh, and also, this may vary some people. There might be some characters that are so likable, some of them don't even last as long as they should, no matter if they're the main focus or not. So yeah, there are some characters that I want to blast them out of a cannon immediately, but for the ones I like, they're pretty solid. You think that now we are going to a new island, it means everything will be the same, just with a different color scheme. Not exactly. First, the designs of the characters are actually nice. There can be some copy and paste looks on previous Total Drama characters, and you can see it more on Dave and Sky, but they're okay. The character animation is pretty simplistic on the teenagers, making them more realistic, while the rest of the animals are pretty much depicting their nature or throw in some cartoony moments like on the bears, the monkeys, and this one chicken. The backgrounds are actually well made. I know it looks mostly like an island filled with trees, but unlike Camp Wallowanaqua, Pocket Tail Island has more diversity than the old island. It even takes us to unique places like the treehouse, the cave, and the island truly stands out once it's twisted to reveal. The challenges are still enjoyable with their suspenseful outcomes like in Truth or Scares, while the rest like the Grease Challenge and the Monkey Challenge are pretty much a race to the finish. But braces on a beaver! <laughs> So no wonder Chris chose this island. The animation brings a lot of excitement. It may not be Revenge of the Island, but at least it's not All Stars. Total Drama Pocket Tail Island may not be great with a few weak and annoying characters, but thanks to the animation, the rest of the likable characters, and keeping the competition as the major focus, this one is actually enjoyable. So obviously, if you're a Total Drama fan, go check it out. But if you're looking for a show that has a more Survivor X feel to it, this is worth watching. And now, I only have one Total Drama season left before I can close the book. Well, I better make it count. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm going to have lunch at Darwin's Food Safari. Thank you for watching my video. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe me to share your thoughts. And stay tuned every week for a new review and other project. See you soon.